just read these paragraphs. So, like, they started with the middle name of the place. The place cross country team completed the main line invitational at Haverford College on the 26th of September. Four runners on the team Nick Ross, Jimmy Murphy, Andrew Gorsuch, and Brandon, and Brandon Robinson finished within the top half of the field. Of the 122 runners, Nick Ross was able to snag 16th place with a time of 19 minutes and 49 seconds for a four mile run, making him the first explorer to cross the finish line. Coach Dan Ireland, pleased with the team's performance, said that Gorsuch easily ran the best race of the season. Five, the team told 11 of their runners cracked the top 50. Of those 11, five of the explorers were also able to place in the top 30. Michelle Harrison was seen for the third time as the first explorer to cross the finish line, placing 15th with a time of 17 minutes and 46 seconds for a three mile race. Explorers Noah Mickel, Ann Reyes, and Kayla McNally were placed by Coach Dan Ireland for running in the past, and he said we cannot wait to see what they can do this season. The South Volleyball had a busy week. They started conference play. On September 27th, the explorers took on George Mason at home. Both teams entered the match coming off difficult stretches of non-conference opponents and looked to turn things around. Patriots proved too difficult for the Explorers to handle as they captured a victory in straight sets. The Explorers looked, were able to put together a very competitive match through all three sets, but were not able to defend the strong Patriot attack. Freshman Phoebe Cope posted career-high numbers, however, amassing eight kills and six digs in the match. Kelly Perloff also made her long-awaited return to the lineup after missing six games for the Explorers. On September 28th, the Explorers welcomed the Rhode Island Rams to the Commonwealth Arena, hoping to snatch a 17-2 win streak. Their efforts proved to be insufficient, as they failed to pick up a victory, losing in straight sets. The Rams had momentum entering the match, coming off a sweep against Fordham, and it showed as they put together many impressive scoring runs throughout the match. The LaSalle sophomore hitter Kelly Perlow led the team with 12 kills in her second game back from injury, while on extended break. Michelle Seeley got her first double double in the season, racking up 14 assists and 12 digs for the Blue Bowl. The Whiteout crowd on September 30th attempted to help rally the volleyball team to a 5 5 OPM, but were unsuccessful in their endeavor. The Explorers played very well throughout the match, winning the first set, something that they have not done since their season opener. The Blue and Gold could not hold on to secure the victory despite the strong play from several Explorer athletes. Kelly Perlow matched her second double-double of the season with 16 kills and 14 digs. And I know that not only led the South, but also came in digs with 21. Michelle Peely continued her run of superb play with her fifth double-double of the season and third in four games, with 24 assists and 10 digs, while also adding five kills. After last week's blowout win against Lehigh, the South men's soccer traveled to Florida to take on the Stetson Hatters on September, Saturday to the 28th. Continuing last week's hot streak, the Explorers crushed the Hatters 3 to 1 in a flurry of second half scores. Senior Fulmer Chapman accounted for two of them, but it wasn't just his game. Senior John Carlo, twin ace, scored his first goal of the season, taking the third goal off a quick cross by Jamie Speed in the 73rd minute. Senior goalie John McCarthy almost had his 26 shutout of his career, but Stetson managed to slip one through in the 87th minute to bring their score to 1. The two-game streak was broken on Wednesday, October 2nd, in a loss to Villanova. The Explorers were off to a hot start, but couldn't get the W. Check out the footage of last week's marquee matchup game. Wildcats won the home game of the 2013 season. The Wildcats entered the game with a 3-4-1 record, while LaSalle posted a 3-3-2 and record for the season. The Explorers battled back and forth with Nova until the 22nd minute. Senior Jason Plumoff connected to fellow senior Glenn Roy Chapman, who dished the ball to Kahil Williams. Williams, a rookie, scored his first collegiate goal as an explorer. Plumoff's assist moves him up to four on the season, which is a team high currently. The Sound maintained their one to nothing lead until the Wildcats struck with less than three minutes in the half. Senior star John McCarthy took on Nova's Padraig McCullough and came up short. The score stayed tied into the half. Coming out of halftime, play was evenly matched. Both teams made quick transfers and came close to scoring. It wasn't until the 72nd minute that another goal was scored. Bill Nova converted a rebounded shot and stole the lead. Knowing time was running low, the Explorers pushed up and crowded Nova's defensive half. Unfortunately, the Wildcats gained possession and turned on a quick attack. The breakaway caught the Explorers off guard and left McCarthy alone on defense. 
With 50 seconds left in the game, Villanova secured the 3-1 victory. The Explorers have almost an entire week until they take the field again. They travel to New York for their last non-conference game of the 2013 season. The women's soccer team traveled down Broad Street to take on the Dragons of Drexel University on September 26th. The ladies stormed the Dragons' cage early, using their speed to rush down the field. Despite earlier opportunities, the Explorers finally connected in the 27th minute. Jane Sadie bounced during eight games and placed the ball past junior keeper Jamie Savannah, bringing the Explorers up to nothing over the Dragons. The Explorers' defense would carry the Explorers into the second half of the Dragons' game. Junior Lauren Hussaini was working as the team's server on Thursday as she served another beautiful pass to senior Renee Washington to put the Explorers up 2-0 over the Dragons. In the final minute, Mary Kate Bateman and Kelsey Hayford connect to lead the Explorers to a 4-0 lead over the Lady Dragons. The Explorers are now 7-2 and will return home on October 4th to take on the 49ers. The women also took on Princeton this past week in an exciting matchup. On October 1st, the South Women's Soccer recorded a draw on Princeton in a hard-fought game. The Explorers were outshot by Tigers, with junior goalkeeper Jessica Wiggins recording seven saves in her third shutout of the season. The Explorers returned to action on October 4th, 4th excuse me, against Fordham at McCarthy Stadium to kick off the Atlantic 10 Conference play at 7 p.m. All right, when we return from this short commercial break, we will have more exciting news and news. Chloe Cave was able to 
with her singles match after taking the first two sets. Sophomore Margo Tokido also won her singles match in the first two sets. Trotty and Tokido teamed up in a doubles match and won by 12-8-2. Women Lenara Rugby won the state champions Bulldog University on September 30th, losing by a score of 7 to 3. The only two wins coming from the foul were in singles play. One win came from senior Chloe Trey, who won in two sets, each by a score of 6 to 2. The other foul win came from sophomore Marga Tavia in two sets by scores of 6 to 0 and 6 to 2. The South freshman Madison Gillen had a tough time in her singles match when she was shut out in two sets. The South sophomore Sophia Johnson also was shut out in two sets during the singles match. On September 28th, the LaSalle men's tennis team faced off against Philadelphia University. The Explorers finished with another victory, 4 to 0. Senior Joseph LeBay contributed to LaSalle's win by winning his singles match after taking the first two sets. He also teamed up with freshman Brian Valio for a doubles victory and had a final score of 8 to 3. Valio also had himself a singles victory after winning the first two sets. Also helping LaSalle's win during singles play was a two-set victory by junior Jill Fetterman. To top off LaSalle's shutout, Philadelphia University lost every doubles match. The men brought their record to 4-0 in the following game with an impressive 7-0 win over Millersville University. During singles play, senior Joseph LeBate, junior Jill Fetterman, and junior Robert Hoffman all won their matches in two sets, with each score being 6 to nothing. Freshman Brian Valco had a similar score during single play after winning his match in two sets but had a final score of 6 to 1. Junior Tom Benno and Tom McLeod both won their singles matches in two sets to complete a sweep in singles play. LaSalle was also able to sweep during doubles play by winning every match. It's time for another quick break, but when we get back, check out when Rohan Brown interviews Tom McLeod of this undefeated men's tennis team. And then afterwards, we will have the latest headline and exploring headlines, and we'll also have the marquee matchup, so stay tuned. Stuff and to get different 
tables on how to handle certain situations and stuff. Um, I think that really makes it something unique, you know, and the fact that we can make that work, I think that says a lot about our team and the leadership on that. Okay, so you're talking about upcoming games. Do you have um, game this weekend? Yeah, we play uh, Mount St. Mary's on Saturday um, at 11. Everyone should come out for that. Um, yeah, we yeah. well, yeah. yeah. try to get people to come. Exactly, it's going to be great. And then um, we go to Chapel of St. Peter's in uh, New Jersey. It's going to be a tough one. Um, so we're really excited. I mean, team's really clicking right now. And we all just got to stay on top of our game and not let our guard down. You know, we take attack every point. Like it's our last, you know. I like that. I like that. So, uh, when did you start playing tennis? When did it become a passion? I mean, probably when I was like around 12, 13. I just thought, thought it looked pretty cool. And then, I mean, I always just dabbled with it. You know, I never really thought much about it. And then in high school, I really fell in love with it. And then, what did you become a Messiah? Besides the fact that I got to meet you, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I like being in the city and just the opportunity to play a regional sport. I mean, you really can't turn that opportunity down. I mean, both the South are amazing university, and I love my experience here so far. It's a great place to be. Everybody remember that. Now, what is your favorite thing about the South? Besides me, I think the welcoming. Welcoming attitude that almost everyone gives you on the South, from professors to students to faculty. I mean, anything. Like, people just want to hear from you. They want to talk to you, and, like, they genuinely want to know how you're doing. And I think that's something unique about the South that not many places can offer. That's something the South community offers. So, your time maker, I'm a time maker. What do you hope to uh, achieve with that? I'll say to tell you the truth. I just want to like, reach out and like, help a lot of people. And I feel like communication is a great way to do that through mass media and like, mass communication tactics such as television and the internet. And I don't know. I feel like calm classes are like the most entertaining. And uh, they're, they're just. They keep me away. Just it's it's a, it's a great place to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. That's why I'm here. So let's get back into your, your personal life. Right? What's your favorite Disney movie? Favorite Disney movie? Choose wisely. There's so many. The Lion King is probably one of my favorites. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting for somebody to say Tarzan. Like, come on. Oh, Tarzan's great. Tarzan's great. Tarzan's great. We're not playing the Lion King. Me, Simba's got it. Oh, my goodness. So did you um, play tennis your whole life? No. Uh, I actually didn't. I mean, lacrosse was really big in Maryland, and so I played lacrosse like, all my life. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, tennis was kind of like an afterthought until like high school and stuff. I don't know if high school was that way. So you want to share any embarrassing moments? Uh, one time I lost a match in high school, and I just chucked my racket. My coach was literally like the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> and he's like, how does he do that? And I had to explain to him, like, I just lost my temper and just threw that thing. And, like, it was really embarrassing, but uh, he, he, he eventually, like, talked it out. And he was like, just don't do that again. <laughs> I've never turned my back in ever again. Not a good, not a good thing to do. <laughs> so, what's the most important thing to tell us? What's your second? Who's, um, What's your biggest fan of in your family? Oh my gosh, all of them from the siblings to the dogs. So <laughs> I mean, my family is my biggest support. I really, I wouldn't be here today without them. My family is the best. That's good to know. So, do you have um, some type of ritual that you do before you practice or play? Um, I feel like for matches, I just go through like a mental checklist in my head to like make sure like I'm. As, as like physically, mentally, and like spiritually as prepared as possible to like play this match. You know, I mean, like it's gonna be hard enough as it is to go out there and play, but I want to make sure I'm I'm as prepared as I can be. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, that's a good one. So we said uh, Saturday's the next game. Yeah. So October fifth, eleven a.m. Be there. And this is Tom McLeod. Thank you so much for having me on, Brown. You're watching on the Southern on the South TV Sports Line and Media Center.
Make sure I brush my teeth. It's always smarter. What's the difference? You always told me to dream big. To all of those parents who took the time to make raising their children their most important job, we'd like to say thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thanks, Mom and Dad. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. the must-be game of the week is women's soccer matchup against Fordham University. On Friday, October 4th, the Explorers face the Rams in their first game in a Sun Park. The matchup will be taking place here in McCarthy Stadium, so be sure to mark your calendars now for the big game. As for the first to watch, keep your eye on number 15, junior Kelsey Haycomb. Haycomb is an aggressive attacker. She has taken 23 shots on goal this season and leads the team with 8 goals. Last year, she was named to the Atlantic 10 second team all-conference and was the a 10 Rookie of the Year her freshman year. Kate Cook is threatening the second record for career goals scored as well. The record set in 2002 is only seven goals away from being dismantled. Also, be sure to pay attention to number 10, Miriam Hussein. The midfielder currently leads the team in assists with seven and has been a major contributing factor to the LaSalle Vincent. Two more assists during a 10 will play will put the opposing team in the record books for most assists in a single season. After this season, Hussini is expected to be in the induction into the top five for total career assists. And now for the key to the game. So Fordham Rams currently have a 3-5-2 record. While this seems like it will be an easy win for the Explorers, they need to remain level-headed and not let their confidence overpower them. The Explorers, who boost a mate into record, have not played any of the same teams as the Rams, so it is a mistake to judge their opponents so, opponent solely in their losing record, especially because they have, been, they have played big-name teams like Rutgers, Vermont, and Dartmouth. Another point the sound needs to keep in mind is that Fordham has scored most of their goals in the, in the first half of the play. The Explorers usually score during the second half. With that said, the sound needs to, keep, to come out from the first whistle, firing off on cil- cylinders while they are able to oftentimes regain leads in the second. One can never be too cautious, especially with this being the first game of the conference play. The sound needs to come out strong and focus on maintaining control of the play in order to withhold the Rams from taking an early lead. So, that does it for, for us here on this edition of Marquee Matchup. Don't forget to come out and support the women's soccer team on Friday, October 4th at 7 p.m. at McCarthy Stadium. 
It is sure to be a tough task to make Carlo Catholics fight with me. I will remain a student and will see you next week. It may have just been some job. But for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescue. And my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today. And be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. events by keeping up with us at on Twitter at Sportsline LTV or if you'd like you can um, look on Facebook we are on Facebook at facebook.com excuse me slash LaSalle TV uh, we will be posting game updates and if you want you can post your comments and suggestions to us and we will see what we can do yep and I'm Bethany Lowe and this is Cody Barr and we'll see you at the game